Growing house plants in my fish tanks has been such a rewarding experience for me and it can be for you as well. It hasn't always been easy, but there are a few secrets that if you know them can simplify the process and greatly increase your chances of success. Today I'm going to share my top three secrets that I've learned over the years that have really helped me to grow a wide variety of house plants in my tanks. And afterward, we'll answer a few frequently asked questions. Secret number one, keep a diversified approach. When I have a brand new plant that I've never tried before, I need to find out how it will grow best as a riparian plant. Some riparian plants get started best with their roots simply growing in the water. Some do best with a substrate to get started. Some potted plants can be adapted to grow in the water, but then others work best as cuttings getting started. And then some plants just do not adapt to hydroponic conditions. So instead of trying each of these methods one at a time, I will try to do them all at one time or as many as I can. For example, I get a new plant. If it's large enough, I'll divide it into three sections. And section number one will go into the tank with just the roots hanging in the water. Section number two will go into a planter basket or a planter of some kind with a substrate of some sort. And section number three will get potted back up as a regular house plant and it will serve as backup in case the methods don't work. But I will take cuttings from this and try to propagate those in the water. So this reduces the amount of time overall that the process takes and allows me to discover which method works best. And if they all fail, I still have that potted plant as backup and to maybe try again later. Sometimes the plant just isn't big enough to try all of the methods at once, but that's okay. I just work with what I have and try as many as I can. Secret number two is provide adequate lighting. Now I've mentioned this in a number of other videos already, but it is important. Many of these plants are considered low light plants because they can tolerate low light conditions, but will grow better indoors with a supplemental light source of some kind. Keep in mind that low levels of sunlight is different than low levels of artificial light. Many of these plants will thrive growing outdoors in the shade, which is low light conditions, but when growing indoors, they may need higher light from a supplemental light source. Secret number three, remember that roots want a substrate. Plants like Pothos and Pisoli and Monstera are used by a lot of fish keepers to filter their tank water with, and the roots are just hanging in the water and that works. The plants grow fine, they filter the water, taking all the nitrates and phosphates out. But I have found that with, with these plants and many others, if you allow those roots to grow down and tap into the tank substrate, it takes the growth to a whole new level. Leaves get bigger, vines get longer and thicker. Even plants that start off better with their roots growing in the water, like the three I mentioned earlier, will, you know, once they've adapted to the water, if you let them grow down to the substrate, they will perform even better. So really the, the planters that I show you how to make on this channel, they're really just anchors that hold the plant in place. Eventually, eventually those roots are going to come out of the planter and they're looking for new territory. It's the root's job to find the greatest concentration of nutrients within their reach. And so the nutrients they get from the water column just fuels their growth and holds them over until they get down into the tank substrate. And that's when the real magic happens. So think of the tank itself as being the actual planter. So if the riparian plants are all feeding from the substrate, won't that eventually deplete the nutrients in the substrate? And the answer is yes, eventually it will. But my solution for that has been to just use fertilizer tabs. Just like a regular houseplant in potting soil needs to be fertilized from time to time, so do the plants in the tank. And again, I'm thinking of the tank as a planter. But I have been surprised how little I've had to fertilize using fertilizer tabs. For example, pothos growing in my 75 gallon tank has been growing strong for well over a year. I've even pruned it back severely. It has started recovering and is thriving again. And it's been over one year since I have even fertilized it using the tabs. So it's amazing how much of the nutrients that these plants can derive from the substrate, from the fish waste and everything without depleting it. That's, that's been my experience. How can pothos grow hydroponically in a fish tank 
but can die if overwatered growing in potting soil. And of course, it's not just pothos, it's most of all of these house plants. They are terrestrial plants, but they can adapt to hydroponic conditions. So it really comes down to adaptability. Terrestrial plants can die if the soil is waterlogged for too long because they are adapted to a well-drained environment and then you suddenly change that environment, it gets waterlogged and all that oxygen is displaced, the roots can't breathe, and then anaerobic bacteria take over and you get root rot. But that same plant can grow in water once the roots have had time to adapt to living in water and to the oxygen levels in the water. And of course some plants are pretty much unlimited in their adaptability. I'm thinking of bog plants in particular, like Louisiana iris, uh, Sagittaria, and pickerel weed, pond plants basically. They can go from well-drained soil to waterlogged back and forth, and they, they're just fine. They, they've already, they are well adapted to wider rain, which also make them great riparian plants. When I first got started, it was difficult to find a consolidated source of information on this topic. Now there are plenty of other channels, there's websites out there that show amazing repariums, these other tanks and projects, and they give some instruction, but I still had to figure out a lot of this as I went along. One of my goals for this channel is that it will be a consolidated resource to help you get started and to help you find the same joy that I have found in this hobby and to realize that we grow along with our plants. When we build these tanks, we are actually building a story. And I also believe that every tank tells a story. Check out my video by that title where I explain what I mean by that and also where I share part of my story of how, what got me into this hobby to begin with and how this channel got started. Well, please hit that like button if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.